A herding dog does what? Wham, wham, wham. Mm -hmm. So you need to be agile. So the thing is, is when you go too steep, the other, the other side effect to being too steep is you go, you knuckling over almost. Mm -hmm. So you have no left or right. It's more of a sprint straight ahead. Like so a could line. shoulder, could a could shoulder setup alone increase the risk of knuckling? No, oh, absolutely. So let me ask you this: a boxer. Yeah. Let's take a boxer for an example. What do their feet look like? You talking about their pigeon toes? No, like uh, their feet feet. Oh, uh, uh, I ain't never seen no boxer's feet. I They're tight with... and really forward. Or if you look at, you know, I mean really forward. Because look at their shoulder setup. It's really strong, really like forward. Oh, like, boxer. I'm thinking Mike Tyson. <laughs> no, 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 like a boxer <laughs> boxer. Like, think about the same thing. Hey, I swear. I was like, yo, Tyson, who's... I'm thinking about where they at on the mat, <laughs> find the soft spots, all that stuff. Hey, it's all right. He uh, literally is talking about a boxer to dog. A a yes, I've seen an so, AKC boxer. So how steep are they? Yeah. Very oh, steep yeah. and big, forward. Big chest, narrow rears, all that stuff. But shoulder setup is very steep yeah, yeah, yeah. and very forward. And now what do their feet look like? Very knuckled up. And you know what else, what else breed? You can tell You can tell if somebody's used the AM staff because a lot of AM staffs have tree super trunks. Forward. Super and, forward. Them feet, when I tell you they're like this, so the, some dogs had them paws like this here, but that AM staff, them toes be like this here on the ground. So those, those type of paws, we like them yeah. for sure. But for Stan's particular work, working, working dogs doesn't. They can do the hundred yard dash. <laughs> they can do the hardest hitting competition. But when it goes left, right, left, right, it's not good. Think about it. You want your hands. You want. You want to be able to feel the ground. So you need a little bit more feet. Hey. Hands. Shut. So I mean, think of. Uh, that was good. Look at Barry Sanders. Low to the ground, very agile. Yeah. Go left and right. Can cut on a dime. And then you take somebody like Shaq. Bro, that motherfucker ain't cutting left or right too fast. He gonna be like, he cross over this slow. Joker didn't hit 10 feet left. <laughs> but, uh, that's what I'm saying. So people have to understand the, 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 the shoulder setup, it affects everything. Your angles, it's all about angles. Dogs are about angles. Your angles in the front have to match your angles in the rack. And what's that, femur to tibia? Or would you yeah. say femur to... Just the shoulder, your shoulder angle and your croup set. They have to match. Those two angles, they need to match. And when they're out of balance, you get an out of balance dog. I mean, I have a bunch of them here. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm trying to fix them. You know what I mean? It's, it's what life is about, fixing dogs. Hey, look, people, you know what I think makes everything we do work? It's because we just tell the truth. And the truth is, is nobody's perfect. Everybody's improving. But people like to show perception rooted in perfection. And perfection is a pursuit, but it's not reality. <laughs> look, look, stay, just stay still. Yeah. Look at his feet. His feet, look how his passion's way up here. Yeah. So he can go left and right very quickly. <laughs> Facts. I mean, fact. when he did, that's we, what he's designed to do. Yeah. Left, right, up, down, left, right, up, yeah, down. But teach. he has steep shoulders, but that's why he's a lighter dog. So our, everything is in, it's all in conjoining. And that's what people don't understand. Dogs like him, he has steep shoulders. I've seen him walk. Yeah. But he's only what? Fucking 12 pounds max? <laughs> and that's what a vest on his back? Yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly, he's probably about six pounds. Yeah, no, he, he might be a good six, bro. I got, my bullies are bigger than this in it's week six and he's going on eight months. Yeah. So, and that's what people don't understand. They're gonna be like, well, my Jack Russell's steep. Yeah, but he weighs 12 pounds, bro. Yeah. It's a, it's a total different thing, but their yeah. passions are a lot softer. Yeah. You know, if you ever look at a um, Great Pyrenees, huh. Great Pyrenees, they have, uh, Back do claws even. Yeah, yeah. So it's does so, the uh, Situation Shepherd. And it's to be able to catch when they're running left and right, left and right. Same thing with almost any herding dog. If you look at herding dogs, we'll take a um, an Aussie. Because I know you trained an Aussie. Yeah, Aussie had, <laughs> they're got really Aussie. soft. Mm -hmm. They're really soft in the passion. So they're not really upright and like, oh my God, he's a show dog. They're fragile. They're, they're like agilely fragile, but they're not fragile, but they're agile. But, so they need flexion. Yeah. That's what we call it. They need a lot of more flexion than a dog. That's, I mean, you get a dog that's like, this could be real stiff and tight. So you take a dog like one of mine. He's 90 pounds. He's super upright, super correct. I mean, he's going to move like this. <laughs> like Frankenstein, you know what I mean? Ali used to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they, there's, there's, no, there's no way. Yeah. They can't reach or they can't, you know, like they can't drive sometimes. Or even when they do reach, they can't overextend because the wrist is going to give out. So they can't overextend. You don't see dogs walking on the backs of their pads. They walk on their feet. They don't walk on their balls. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they've been in the crate too long, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's that a topic for too. a different day. <laughs> <laughs> that means it, now people, 
the stands hit record. We're here at the crib and we're talking dog. One of the things I always love is putting this stuff in real time. And when you get to see dogs, Stan and Jamarcus both, and myself, which is why I come out here, you know, when I get a chance, you learn something every time you get around this guy. And it puts in perspective even what to look there for down into the, you know, to the detail. And I have the books. So when he's saying that, I'm like, oh, now that's what that means. You know, it's literally just connecting a lot of dots because he can show us good, bad, and, you know, respectfully ugly when it comes to things that per, could be issues long term or issues that could. That you don't want to double down on. There you go. Prohibit your program's growth. Uh, and that's some of the stuff, you know, so where do you start when breeding? If you're, if you're breeding, if you get two dogs, where's the first thing you would focus on breeding first? Making better. For me, it's always about making better. And is that rooted in health or look? It's a double-edged sword. <laughs> because, Combination of both. Because right? you don't want to make a healthy, healthy dog that nobody wants. I mean, I'm just being real with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make a dog that people are visually appealing to. And then, I, I, at the same time... You know, we always say that social media is the downfall of society, but we can use it to our advantage because now, you know, when I came up in the dogs, we had VHSs that we had to wait two and three weeks for them to send them to us. Yeah. I got a bag of them in the crib. <laughs> and uh, we would have to wait, and I had to pay you $25, and the VHS would come, and then I'd have to watch it. And they'd be like, eh, I don't want to use him. Let me find another dog. Where oh, social you're media. Talking about. Yeah, where social oh. media, now I can see 20,000 dogs at the stroke of a finger now. You know what I mean? So social media things. is, it changes things for us. Now we can go into OFA, you know, dot com and we can look up. And that's not only fast people. Oh, hell That man. is, uh, a, what does it stand for? I forgot. It's uh, a hip thing. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, a hip organization objectively. Oh, don't worry about it. It ain't that important. We don't own it. So, yeah. oh. so OFA, you can go there. You can type in a dog, especially if they well, breeds. You can type in by breed. Like we can look up all the dogs that are Jack Russells that are tested. Hips, huh. elbows, trachs, hearts, eyes, and say, all right, well, this dog's all tested. These four dogs are all tested. Now, if I'm trying to make an absolute healthier dog, I have the, between these four dogs in that in that personal database. Now, there might be ten other databases. You know what I mean? Yeah. But because you know the UK doesn't use OFA. Oh. So, uh, and then you can look up pin hip too, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's other options that we have, but we now have the internet to our advantage to where we can search. We don't quality. have to, yeah, we can search through, we can start here and say, all right, these are the looks. I mean, these are the health that I want to be at. Now who has the look, you know what I mean? Then come down slowly, but surely. There you go. There you go. So you start from the inside out, but focus on making sure for one, you could, uh, if you're looking at it from a business standpoint and even though you got to, you, you got to produce something that people want to see. Yeah. You got to produce something people want to see uh, or be as, as good as you can be and, and make people just want it regardless. <laughs> Stay tuned people.